success to me is not about you making more money, but which life do we invest or glue around you? And what happens do you put in people around you? Do you make them cry or they laugh? So wow. my success is to wish everybody that's around me happy, to look happy, look good, feel good, and achieve what he wants to achieve in life. If someone ever call you an African, tell them that what Amaya says, we are Africans. When I say Africans, Africans are capable of managing their own affairs. Africans are capable of building their own continent. Listen, I know Africa is not perfect, but Africans are trying their possible best to change the narrative of the Africa that we all know. When I show you stuff like that, most of you might be like, yo, this is beautiful, but this is not owned by an African. And this is why I am here, your number one bragger to celebrate every successful African. Can you guys give me my song? Celebrating every African, I am, I am, I am, I am, through Africa. Yes, I'm here to celebrate a young man who built something out of nothing. When we got married, we had nothing, not even a quarter plot, talking of half or one plot. We got married before we bought a plot of land. That is how the story started. This, this is the scars wow. of hustling. Everything is possible. Besides this construction for the past, let's say, three years now, hmm. and look at me where we are. You started this three years ago? Yeah, three years ago. We started in a car as an office, a Hyundai Ascent 2005 model. That was an, our office. For Agazi Homes? For Agazi, the whole group of companies. When you see me this happy, what you need to do to make me more happy is by liking the video, sharing this video, so that this video can reach a lot of people. Because my job and what inspired me to do more of what I do is to see people being inspired to go out there to be great. Doesn't matter where you're born. I'm a village boy myself. People also call me village boy. You two know, village boys in the two building. Boys <laughs> the building. And let this story inspire masses. Help me like this video, share, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Do you actually see that so many Africans hate successful Africans? Exactly. 100% true. I've seen it. I've never asked anybody before. 100% true. Why are we like that? But a young person like you, and you've been able to achieve something incredible like this. Yeah. You don't think we need to celebrate you? Hmm. I mean, I'm no God, so you can't celebrate me. It's ah. only God with good celebration too. Okay. I love that. Successful people in Africa are so humble. I am not, and I need to brag on behalf of them. So today, I'm gonna to talk about you in a bragging way, but forgive me, oh, it's no. just my nature. When I'm on camera, I brag a lot. Okay. Off camera, I'm very humble, just like you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is your real name Agazi? No, 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 Agazi is never my name. Agazi is not your name? No. Were you born and raised in Ghana? Yes, 100%. 100%? 100% yeah. Tell me more. Where were you born in Ghana? <laughs> I was born in Kofo area. Okay. Okay. And then raised up from the village called uh, the Sechiri as well. So that's where I grew up from. So people also call me village boy. You two know, village boys in the two building. Village boys in the building. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a village boy, let me know how was childhood like when you're growing up. Was uh, very tough. It's it's like a punishment. How? Because imagine you are from the cocoa farm, the bush inside, eh? you go to the city and all your clothes is dirty and you meet your colleagues, your classmates, looking very nice, gentle. 
how will you feel first? A bit embarrassed. Embarrassed. Where do you go to? You can't go. I mean, with a tough childhood, mm -hmm. how did you come out of it? Hmm. That is something I can say. It is my power, but it is God. God did it. God made me who I am today. Because I was zero, zero, zero. I was negative. I came from nowhere to become who I am today. I can't remember when I was going to uh, IPS. Hmm? And I went to the village tell my dad I want to go to school. And I got admission in IPS. He said, there's no money. Okay? Then I have to go to my mother. You know mothers, how yeah. they feel like. Yeah. Are you see your mother still alive? So I went to this woman, my mother, I call her this woman, because she's magic like a magician in my life. I said, my brother, my son, I don't have money, but I'll go and borrow money for you. I said, yeah, borrow me money. By then, before time, he changed the currency to uh, our yeah, Luma, we, we, new, new currency. currencies. So yeah. I said, he said, I will give you five hundred so this, Go to the city. Go and think of what to do to make money. So I picked that five hundred so this, and I went to Koko to the sawmill where they be selling wood, carving wood, and all those things. So I start business with that five hundred so this, and that five hundred so this, When I work in the week. Then I'll go to school. When I every weekend I will go to the sawmill, go and pick product, go and sell in the market, like that. Wow. Then my first year in the IPS was like crazy. I have to pitch in my friend's dormitory, a uh, uh, hostel. Hostel. Hmm? When I was going to school, I have only two clothes and then one foot. For the first semester. What I told you was like a case from God, but I survived it till today. Through the struggling, I met a couple of friends. Mm. Then now they started doing scrap businesses. Scrap? Yes, yeah, scrap, scrap. They go around, buy scraps and sell. There I started that scrap business also with them with that small capital I was having. So every weekend I go for scrap business and I have one boy. I give him the money, go run, go buy, and then weekends I'll come and go and sell. Is it when you do scraps here, yeah, probably it gives you a mark. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, because I've done it before, so <laughs> it, it gives you a mark, the right? Marks are there. No, no, I, 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 I need to confirm. It? No, I want to see it. This, this is the scars wow. of hustling of this mark. I will show you. I'll show you. Big ones are there. I had, let's do some my such a story just then. Whoa. What is here? This is a scar. What is here? That's a, another scar. And then watch here. So my second years in IPF, even though things were tough for me, so I made this friend called Daniel. Then he, he tried to help me. And then there he helped me link me up to uh, Unibank. Then there I started working with Unibank as a sales officer. So through there, then I have in mind one day I must be somebody in life. Wow. So through the bank, then I started packing notebooks. I started writing a little bit. I started writing about people's businesses. Because when I come to you as a, a company, yeah. like the way you are here today, yeah. I will ask you, maybe, and they, we call something KYC. Mm. So know your customer. Mm. Okay, know your customer. So when I come to you, mm. I ask you a lot of questions about your businesses. Okay. And then if it's loan we are coming to give you, I will ask you so many documents. Who are your suppliers? How do you process? 
how do you make it? Mm. And how do you get raw materials? Mm. And then when you get it, how much do you sell it? So automatically, you give me your source of business. I get it from you. Wow. Source of capital. I've already got it. Okay? And then all your ideas, your techniques in the business, I have them already. Because you so, were the sales and marketing. Yes, sales and marketing. So I started packing those books down. Till somewhere 2000 and, uh, 2009, hmm. 2011. Hmm. Then I moved from that place to Merchant Bank, Universal, now Universal Merchant Bank. There too, I became a salesperson and at the same time doing loans, scheme loans and things. And if you ask my teams, they will tell you I am like a magician. <laughs> Before 15th of every month, I meet my target, meet everything already. So it got to a time, same thing that I was doing there, mm. then I get more knowledge about it, how to go it, do it bigger and bigger for the sales. So I started going to oil companies, factories who consume oil and all those stuff. Then there too, I started packing the books, okay? So I packed the books to like 2014, no, 2013. Mm. Then there, I leave the bank to work with one company. Which is one? Which is uh, an oil company. company. Over there, they said they will pay me commission. But I didn't really, I work, at the end of the month, I work like maybe 50, 70, 100 trips. And the trip, they are supposed to mark me 500 cities. So imagine if I work for you and 500 by 100, how much? I'm supposed to give me like 50K. Yeah. It's my pocket. Yeah. And the uh, CEO said, <laughs> they can't pay me that amount of money. Wow. He said they will pay me. 2000. I said, okay, I will take it. The month ends, he gave me my first month, he gave me thousands to this. He didn't even give you your 2000. No. After the thousands to this, then now he paid me 500 every month. And I was like, ah, why all this? I said, okay, well, it is me who said I wanted to learn. I was any like 1000, 2000 from the bank. Bank. And plus my commission, I make like 3000, 4000 a month. And I, I leave that to come, say, okay, let me go and learn something there. So somewhere 2014, yeah. one Sunday, I moved from the house, and then my a whole house got burnt. And everything in the house, including my certificate, everything got burnt. So when it got burnt, and I said, well, maybe it is God. Even some people's money that are with me as customers' money also got bent. Whoa. So it became a headache for me. Everything of mine, even clothes to wear, only the clothes that I was wearing like this that I went out. Got bent. Was left for me. So everything there got bent. So my friends, everybody, those who can help me, help me. Even said company I was working with, I went to them, begged them to borrow me money. They have to seize my car and pack it down and take my car documents before they can give me the money. Wow. Which I did. Then through that struggling, I was chasing a contract for the same company. The very day they gave me the contract, I was fired from the company. The, so, the, the, the contract that you were chasing for the same the company? Same company. I was fired. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was there, I realized, no, God don't like me. Before I said, God, <laughs> God hates me. So quickly, I also started changing my mind from God. God. Then something said, don't do, don't be a fool. Stick to it. You forgot him. You had something called Agazi. Agazi is your motto. Agazi is your story. Agazi has to be this. Your future company has to be Agazi. Then there, I remember in the hardship during the merchant bank time, mm. I registered a company called Agazi. So I called my friend that helped me get the contract for the factory, uh, the company. And then I explained the whole thing to him. He said, forget it. Go and see Mr. Susu and so. He will give you the product. 
I will pay for it. By then, I was nobody. They helped you. And they helped me. I worked for them. I was working for them. They are making their millions of dollars. I mm. don't have problem. But I don't envy anything. The small one that comes into my pocket is mine. So if I work for you and you make one million dollars and I get like fifty thousand, seventy thousand dollars, why should I complain? That's it. Before I don't have any money. That's it. So through there, I was able to marry. Oh. On my wedding. When, when, when you were getting the seventy thousand yeah. dollars, you were like, oh, let me get a wife. Before no, before then, <laughs> I was having some small fees deposit of fifteen thousand cities. Okay. So I used it to make a knocking. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer knocking down that way. Let me get married because my, my reverend keep telling me if you get married, your life will change. Whoa. So I said, if reverend say this, then let me go get married quick. So quickly, I married my lady that I was with. But then, quickly. And then, fortunately for me, you see my house there. Let me That's your house. house? That's my house. I will tell you something. Daniel and uh, Kofi, they were out of the country. Mm. So on my wedding day, they said, go collect this money and take 50K. OK. So I take the 50K that we're supposed to use for honeymoon. I asked my wife. My <laughs> friends gave me this money. So what do we use it for? It's better you choose from two things. Either we still stick to the rented apartment or or let's go and build with this money. And she said, a good woman will tell you, let's, let's go and build. And a bad one will say, let's go and chill. So, she said, let's go and build. And is that money you used is to? that money I used to start my work. And we built a house within six months. Five bedroom house with a two bedroom boy sweaters. We got married before we bought a plot of land. That is how the story started like everything at once when he started with the oil company should i say i was his accountant when he brings some thousand two thousand home the next day i take it to the bank but then one thing is i've been his backbone and I, after, after building my own house i set up my own company i started taking contracts on my own to supply fuel oil to other factories and then there my business started growing. From working for somebody? Mm -hmm. Then I set up my own. You set up your own business. Yeah. So which means now there were million dollars will be coming into your own pocket. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. Before I ask you the inspiration behind this whole estate, let me tell you something that you don't know. See, when you were looking for a job, mm -hmm. you're struggling. Yeah, hundred percent. Have you seen the number? Uh, have you seen the number of jobs that you've created? Yeah, for sure. How many people work for you? A lot. A lot. He doesn't even know the number. I can. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I find out from my foreman, I call wow. foreman. Come and give me the data, but I think they are about like 400 people. Eh? How, um, how does this make you feel when, when you come in here? Oh, I feel happy that what I was struggling for, I make people also enjoying it better. Wow. Because I don't want them to go through that hassling I went through. You have an oil and gas company. Why start a real estate business? I was living here alone in the bush. So I sit down and say, why can't I? create a community on my own for people to move in so that the whole place become full of. So if you can even say the structures are affordable. Yeah. Everything is affordable. So any mere man can buy the movie. I didn't intend of making huge amount of profit or money from it. So that's it. That's my main reason. Why should someone invest in these properties? Okay, so first of all, I would say the fact that the price is very competitive. Now with just $150,000, you get to own a home in a gated community. And it's not just about just a house, it's almost finished. Almost? Yes. 
You see, the kitchen, I told you, it's almost finished. This comes with it at no extra cost. And it's good brands, quality brands. So you have wardrobes in here. The kitchen is fully fitted. You have your hob, your hood, refrigerator, a washing machine in there already. It's part of the $150. It's part of it. You're not paying extra for it. There is DSTV connection. There is internet connection. We've done the generator changeover. So when you come, you're just coming with your bed, your sofa, your clothes, and your utensils. That's it. For just $150,000 in a gated community. So three rooms up here. Hmm. Let's check out the master bedroom. First thing to see. Ooh. You feel like Ooh. sleeping, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like sleeping, but I love salt bed, you know. Oh! <laughs> Are we still filming? What's the payment plan to? So you do 20% down payment and then you have 24 months to pay the rest. Interest free. Two years? Interest free, no interest. And then the good thing is that we don't give you a fixed amount to pay. You pay at your own convenience and on your own terms. So you can decide, oh, I want to pay every month, maybe 2,000. I want to pay every quarter. I want to, I want to pay the balance in two installments anyhow. What we need is that by the end of the two years, you're done paying. This is unbelievable. Four bedroom for $160,000. And if by the end of the two years, I'm not done paying, what are you going to do? You're so, going to take back your house? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we won't take back our house. So now you see, we have other arrangements with financial institutions for external mortgage. Hmm. So if at the end of the two years, you're not done, we would always recommend you to speak to a financial firm for a mortgage. So they can give you maybe up to 20 years based on your age and all of that. Wow. So we wouldn't take back the house. <laughs> no, this is such an incredible deal, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am buying one. How many units remaining? Oh, we have about um, 80 units available now. So a lot for everybody, a lot. I'm buying one, so 79 remaining? Yes. Please, let's do this. I mean, the fact that we are Africans, let's support mm -hmm. Africans, man. Mm -hmm. Own a house in Ghana for just $150,000. Yes. Two years payment plan. Interest free. Interest free. That's what I love, interest yes. free. I hate interest. No interest. No. You build this with a loan or your own money? My own money, no loan. I work for people. When I get commissions, I invest the commissions into their property. You mean everything here? Everything here. How, how many units? Around 40 units. Dude! Four bedroom, three bedroom units? Yeah. Four bedroom, three bedroom units. 114! And everything came out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, this is an inspiration to me, myself, because I'm a village boy just like you. Yeah. My father had a cocoa farm, your father had a cocoa yeah. farm. Exactly. And seeing this makes me feel like everything is possible. Will you say you are made in Ghana product? Made in Ghana, 100%. At what point did you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Till now, I never see myself as an entrepreneur. What do you see, see yourself as? I see myself as a learner. I'm still learning. So wow. I'm never an entrepreneur. And I am never going to be a chairman, CEO, or whatever. Who are you in your own company then? Me? Uh-huh. I am an investor. I get one CD, I invest it. I get two CDs, I invest it. So, I am an investor. So which means you have people that run all these things? Yes. Teamwork. Teamwork. Okay. You see your brother, he needs a job. What do you have to do? Invest in your brother with your one CD that you have. Somebody need just 20 cities to start a business. You ask him, what do you think we can make out of that? You check one or two, maybe the one city can make a lot of profit to you. So invest the one city into the person businesses. Help him to grow, he will help you to make more money. So you invest thousands, in, he asks of 20 cities, you invest thousands of cities into that business, and you make more money, more profit out of that. Africa, we must 
going to family. So, I will advise the youth. Let's forget about this uh, quick businesses that fetch or maybe importation and all those things. Let's go fully into family. Well, we go to Dubai. Dubai, they are soil. You can't even plant anything to grow. But you go there, you see a lot of natural trees there. And in Africa, anywhere, even here, you dig here, you plant cocoa, it will grow. Depend on how you take care of it. So I would advise that you we go fully into that field. When you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Something great, something powerful, something like as if I must carry on my head. And bear in mind, Africa, how does the map look like? Like what? a human head. A school. So what is inside the school? Brain. Brain. And what is inside the brain? Wisdom. But the white knows and they are always every day deceiving us to deviate from our wisdom. What are the major challenges that you face when you are establishing this? The challenge are management issue. You set up the business, you give it to your friend or your brother or your somebody you trust to manage for you, and then they mismanage. end up corrupting. So we call it African mentality. Oh, we need to be a little bit of 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 a little hate successful Africans. Mind you what we're doing here now. If it is a Chinese man hmm. or Indian man hmm. or American man that is building this, hmm. you see all Ghanaians rushing to buy, to patronize. But because you are a black man doing it, and you are a village boy doing it, you are nobody trying to grow. They will never buy single for you. No rich man will tell you he want to buy a black man or a Ghanaian property. Why are we like that? If example, you let's take something like let's go to Accra. Yeah. I won't call names, but you see the big big towers that were erected by the whites yeah. or the foreigners yeah. are being occupied fully. And those the one, those ones that are being built. Or established by a Ghanaian, yeah. it's been collapsed, or you, you, they will end up acquiring maybe some small space and then the rest they abandoned it, which is very bad. So we always have the foreigners to take our money out. I, I, I think um, he has done an incredible job, and believe me or not. This house is worth more than the prizes that they are given. So what I'm going to tell you is that the link is in the description. The numbers are on the screen. Please call them and buy one. This is coming from Wadamaya. I'm endorsing Agazi Homes. And I know that you have 114 yeah, houses. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm just telling you that this video, mm. congratulations. Okay. You just sold all your 114 houses. Amen. <laughs> Please don't disappoint me. If you guys disappoint me. See, in two weeks time, mm -hmm. call me. I'll record the call. Tell me that the houses are sold out. Yes. Because we, we need to start supporting our own. The, the cheapest house in here, or the most, uh, how do you call it? The most expensive house in here is like $160,000. Mm -hmm. And I just want to tell you guys that let's do this. Let's support your man. Share this video so that others will hear his story so that they will be inspired. Knowing that you're not the only person who is going through that, that's why I normally love to talk to people like you. If you have the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? Support from our, our realists or leaders.
to the newcomers, like uh, young investors, young entrepreneurs. We need to push them up. Wow. Like, for instance, if you go to China, nobody go to school to go and learn too much book. They all learn practicals, most of their practicals. And the work we are doing is full of practical. The word we live self is practical. Your clothes you are wearing, where did you do where did they print it from? It's practical. It's from China. They will say China. And truly it's China. Exactly. And the government promotes such things like that. They see you building like this. Government wouldn't mind to come and give you like maybe some fifty million dollars to invest and do better and then do more. So like in Africa, none don't. of our leaders do that. They rather pick their money, go and invest in China, Dubai, UK, America, and others. So that's it. Let's stay home and invest home. Thank you so much for talking to me. You're welcome. <laughs>